backup mic and camera stand and everything. But I just wanted to, to kind of wrap up uh, what I started yesterday and get it sort of finished. Now, <laughs> I don't normally use this setup very much. I have to get everything a little bit right. I think that's okay. Yeah, because it took a long time. If you go back and watch the video, it took quite some time to build. Uh, and then it finally built. And I just wanted to finish doing what I had started doing so, um, so I could actually have a kind of conclusion to the whole thing. So if you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, then whatever platform you're on or on twitch.tv slash dxpose, dexpose, just go and find the video from yesterday and you'll see um, where we got up to, basically, or where I got up to. Uh, and I'm just going to finish up now and attempt to rejoin the videos together at a later date. So I was looking at, I'll switch into camera share, uh, I was looking at Fuchsia, the mysterious operating system from Google. What is it all about, etc., etc. We looked around the website quite a lot because um, I had to kill quite a lot of time. <laughs> uh, and I got to this process, um, I think, in fact, pretty sure it was one of the last things I did. I, uh, yeah, I set the product and board here to core functionality and the emulator of x64. And then I ran the build and that was what took a very long time. It actually took several hours, I think. I can't remember, it took a long time. But it is working now. And in fact, if I run that, we should hopefully see. <laughs> Tempting fate here. Should hopefully see. Let me just get that slightly better. There we go. We should hopefully see. Yeah, no work to do. Okay. <laughs> this is already slightly good. Oh, there we go. Good. Yeah. So everything is built. So now we can actually uh, try Fuchsia. So we're going to go to the setup Fuchsia emulator and experiment here first. Uh, where did I just open that? <laughs> no. Uh, there we go. So prerequisites. Fuchsia source installed and environment variables created. Yes, I did do that. Um, configure and built Fuchsia. Yes. Before you can use Femu, you need to build. We did that. Yes. And this is mentioning workstation for the Oh, works. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure it shouldn't matter. Okay, I'm on Mac OS. So, uh, okay, start Femu. FX VDL start host GPU. Um, when launching it for the first time. Okay. All right, let's see what happens. Anyone out there who is watching, who has used Fuchsia or experimented, then. Uh, Please have a look, let me know. Uh, we're getting some errors. Oh, things are happening. Yep. Um, I'm not 100% sure how to know when it's done. <laughs> Waiting for me. Ah, here we go. All right. Um, I guess that is it. I don't know if I can zoom in here. Oops, no. Okay, it doesn't look like I can. It's been some, I think this is using the same core as an Android emulator. Um, I'm not sure if there's any way for me to, um, to um, make it bigger. <laughs> I'm not sure if there's gonna be very much to see anyway. So, okay. Right, so this is launched. And this is basically the same thing as we have here, but it's giving me the port to try. So let's do that. So we can just SSH into the emulator. Oh. Is that because I'm already in or? Huh. It's interesting. Let's see. 
Oh, it looks like I'm already being SSHD in automatically, so that's nice. Okay, good. Um, uses a mouse pointer for input. We do not have a GUI though. Uh, interesting. Ah. Use touch input. If you don't need graphics or working under remote workflow, you can run them in headless mode. But I'm not seeing a GUI unless this is the GUI. <laughs> I'm not sure. Is this? Hmm. Um, I, I guess we're working. Okay, let's go to the overview. The emulator lets you test Vusha components. And call using okay. Based on the Android emulator, GUI support. You can run Vusha with the GUI by default. Hmm. I'm not seeing a GUI though. Interesting. Um. I wonder if that's the difference between workstation and core. I don't really want to build again <laughs> because that took a long time. Uh, and if we were following this tutorial, this is kind of taking us down a different path, which is frustrating. I wonder if we build the workstation, it's going to take a lot longer. I mean, this is part of the user experience. We were testing our developer experience. We did actually uh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to tempt fate by starting this build process again. Um, how do I exit? Oh, there we go. OK. I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> I'm worried that this will take a very long time again. But maybe that is part of the, the feedback for the session is that the documentation oops, does not necessarily follow the steps outlined. So that is actually good feedback in itself. Uh, and something is now happening. Oops. Good. Not entirely sure. I think something is happening. The last time I did not do that release part, which is also, oh, I just did it anyway, I think. I think that just worked, but I was impatient <laughs> and canceled. Three minutes and 58 seconds. So yeah, it takes a little bit of time. Um, let's actually check this emulator overview. Let's see. Oh, this is what we were, we were just looking at. Uh, by default with the GUI. So we should have it, really. It doesn't really tell us very much, actually. Hmm. Let's see, I've got a worrying feeling that if I run this, this is basically going to be the end of the part two of the stream because it takes too long, pretty much. But let's see. We shall see. <laughs> but, ah. Error. Interesting. It's a whole other problem. Okay. Well, I'm not sure if that's needed, but let's just start it again and see what happens. And there was something we could try, I remember. Um, yeah, I don't know why we're not seeing a GUI, but yeah. Uh, 
was the emulator. There was something where you could actually run a command. I've got a fly flying around in front of the camera. Very helpful. <laughs> uh, here, writing. There was a little tutorial. Okay, let's try a couple of things. Let's just wait for it to start. Still not seeing a GUI. I don't know if this is the GUI. It's hard to tell, of course. Maybe this is it. Let's just wait for that to fully launch. And hopefully SSH us in again. There we go. So something like this, for example. Let's see if that works. Something is happening. I've got two emulators now. Ah, okay. Oh no, that's just the emulator. So, yeah, nothing is really happening there. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, hmm. <laughs> there was a code tutorial you could try. Where was it? Building computer networking. Starting. That's the same page over and over again. Here, no. Where is it? I had it open. That's the code. Did have something open. Uh, ah, here we go. Run an example component. Okay. How do we actually... Oh. Ah, I see. Let's see if we can skip. So we're going to have to shut these down again. Let's see if we can skip the setting again, because that's... Uh, let's see what happens. So some of the things I've been thinking about for Dexpose for the rest of this year is actually pre-recording because of times like this where there's a lot of waiting. Um, okay, let's see. Well, that did something. Um, it just did the setting the core. We have to build again. Oh dear. <laughs> And I can, uh, instead of streaming, give the illustrative times it took for things to happen, but it's not so dull whilst you watch me staring, waiting. <laughs> okay, it looks like it's compiling that example, which is good. And this hopefully won't take so long, being Rust and Dart. Uh, which reminds me, I must get back to work on my Dart um, app I was building. I was actually making a to-do aggregator in Dart, so it could be cross-platform. I have a tutorial available on the uh, DZone about how I integrated it with Tro, but I want to finish that, actually. I, I want to use it <laughs> more than anything. Let's see. Okay. Do-do-do-do-do. And I already filled a whole lot of time yesterday with looking around the Future website. I think we exhausted that opportunity. So whilst I'm talking about task aggregators and we're waiting for this, this is what I've been using at the moment. Oh, I'll just have to hold that thought. Um, let's try this then. So FX serve. I don't know if we need the emulator open. Not sure. Ah, seems to be... Do we need the... Not sure if we need the emulator open or not. I don't know. Open another terminal. Okay. Oh no, wrong command. Let's copy. Ah, so we do need the emulator running. So we need three terminals open by the looks of it. 
Okay, can be done. So we want uh, yeah. Wait for that. I uh, don't know how long we need to wait. Let's see. Before we can fire this up, and then we can fire this up. See what happens. I don't know if I've got things correct. There seems to be a few steps missing here. Let's serve. Uh, oh, things seem to be happening. Ah. Hmm. So I'm not quite sure what I'm supposed to do. Hmm. I've missed something or I don't know if this is supposed to be run somewhere. I'm slightly confused by that. Okay, anyway, I just wanted to try something and see how far we got, but okay. I think it's a combination of it being quite complex, a, um, a it being quite complex, me stabbing around in the dark a little bit and needing maybe more time and a few missing points there in the documentation. So I think I will, I just wanted to come back after I'd run the build, but I didn't, still didn't get that far. So anyway, it was an interesting experiment. We didn't get very far. I look forward to seeing what people build with Fuchsia and actually seeing what it's for. We didn't really get anywhere with that. I like the fact that it's kind of Rust, C++, Dart, not Java, like Android, which is quite nice. But yeah, if you have any comments on what you think Fuchsia would be used for, would you develop for it once you know what it's used for? Have you tried? Then um, please uh, contact me. And until next time, you can find much more about me on christianchiller.com and whatever i'll be back properly with the proper scheduled show next monday the 11th of february i do believe and whatever you build 